and welcome to the Raw Review. I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, joined by Phil Chambers from What Culture, here to review everything that happened on this week's episode of Monday Now Raw. But before we get into it, if you're a fan of this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube, yeah. where we do daily wrestling podcasts where we not only review Raw, but also SmackDown, the show formerly known as NXT 2.0. AW done my AW Collision pay per views, premium live events. We have interviews, roundtable discussions, and a round of the week complete with a very good quiz, of course, on wrestle culture. As I said, though, joined by Phil Chambers to review this week's episode of Raw. Thank you for joining me today. You are most welcome. It's, a, it's surreal, this, isn't it? Because it's normally wrestle culture that we do, and that's at the end of the week. Yeah, this it feels is... like wrestle culture energy. You might yeah. go a bit wrong, so yeah. we'll see. Stick with it. What did you make of this week's episode of Mana Raw? All right. Yeah, it was, good. Had some good matches, had some good segments. I think it felt a bit like uh, it was definitely a show to get to another show to yes. get to a show kind of thing. Yeah, that's fair. It wasn't fair. anything monumentous storyline-wise or anything that happened. It was just sort of going along the motions mm. to get there. But like some of the matches on it were absolutely great. Yeah, exactly. We are, what, like a week and a bit away from Bash in Berlin. Everything's sort of being set up. Yep. Uh, there was one match I absolutely loved on this episode, and... Some really exciting developments. I'm rapidly thinking that what Triple H has done with Bronson Reed might be one of his biggest achievements in his time <laughs> as Booker. It is genuinely impressive. That yeah. shot where he climbs up and all the crowd just go, here we bloody go. That's also, great. Somehow managed to turn The Miz into an actual baby face yes. in the middle of all this somehow. <laughs> All credit to him. But we'll get there. Let's start uh, at the beginning of the show where Randy Orton comes out to welcome us to Manda Now uh, and says the next time he does that, he's going to be a 15-time world champion. Uh, he said Gunther had made things personal, so uh, that gave him even more of a reason to beat him up in Berlin. Uh, Gunther spoke about his father and grandfather, uh, and then he turned his back. So, of course, Orton had to drop him with the three most deadly letters in all of wrestling, RKO. This brings out Gunther, uh, who said, well, go ahead and celebrate hitting an RKO last week, because that's the only celebrating you're going to do. Uh, the crowd actually chanted, USA. And God bless the United States. And uh, Gunther mocked them having three brain cells. So, there you go. Uh, um, Gunther told Orton he's never going to hit him with an RKO again. I don't think that's true. Um, Gunther said he was going to leave him a bloody mess in Berlin. That might be true. Uh, and expose him as a very successful but very under underachieving one-trick pony. Uh, and then Orton, you and I were laughing about this earlier, warned Gunther he was going to be on a really long flight uh, back from Berlin with a Really big shoe up his ass. A size 15 double extra wide boot. What is it with wrestlers putting shoes up bums? And what is it with... I really enjoy it. What's... I've never heard of a wide, wide shoe, let, uh, let know a double extra wide. You can get like double wide, like caravans. Yes. Might be is the it, same thing. Is that Just like... With shoes? Size 15 as well. That's a weird... Double wide. They have a different size system to us, don't they? I thought it's only... I don't know. Let's I don't find know out what that's only what like one difference, isn't it? So like USG. I would be a ten in American and I'm an eight. Wait, no, that doesn't add up. Right. Hang that's on. not one difference. <laughs> I am I'd be a nine in America because I'm a size eight. Yes. Uh so he, a double a, thin, maybe. A size <laughs> size <laughs> a size fifteen is really a size fourteen. There you go. So oh, tiny feet, Randy. But, Bloody hell. So would they get in America, would they get our size 14 shoe, cut the side off it, glue another shoe to it, and say, right, that's <laughs> like a double extra wide. Anyway, um, Gunther invited Orton to have a medical fight then. Um, but then Ludwig Kaiser tries to attack him. Orton fights him off, fights off Gunther, but that allows Kaiser to chop block him and Gunther to stand tall over him after nailing him with a clothesline. I'm excited for this match. Yeah, me too. I think uh, of all of the... First challenges for Gunther in this kind of world title reign. Like, Randy Orton is such a WWE guy. Mm. The, the sort of visual of seeing Gunther chop him to, till he's dead mm. is really fascinating to me. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy it. I like the mix of the personalities as well. I think Randy Orton is so comfortable with who he is right now. Yeah. Uh, he can be a little bit goofy, uh, but it, like, it just works out because it's just he's just himself, like, more so than he's ever been. In the history of yeah. Randy Orton's run, he just feels like he's just being himself with it, um, and I quite like that. I think it's a really good, like 
high level person for Gunther to chop down in his, in his sort of first title. And defense. it makes makes sense, obviously, with what happened at King of the Ring. I like the fact that they're sort yeah. of tying that all, off. It all works. I think Gunther was really good in this. I think they've been careful with him a lot on promos in the, like, a lot of his stuff that have been really, really great, but, like, the, the bit in front of the Titan Tron where he's, like, looking up at the history of things and talking about wrestling. Like, yes. They, they were, they've been really, really good, but he's not had, like, a huge amount where it felt like he was speaking off the cuff mm. in promos in front of a live crowd. And this, like, the crowd was really hot last night, uh, and the sort of the heat that he was getting and the reactions and, like, the USA stuff, it all felt like he was a bit more comfortable interacting with the crowd and being that kind of bad guy in that side of <laughs> side of things as well. <laughs> like, it's all just coming together, and it just feels really nice. Everyone he faces, he winds them up by saying, he calls them street trash <laughs> or says, oh, your dad and your granddad are crap, and so are you, yeah. basically. So uh, good luck to anyone who steps in there with him next, one would assume. But, yeah, I, I would talk to with Andy about this uh, earlier on today about how, Gunther's holding this title for me until probably at least WrestleMania. Yeah, I imagine. So you have so. to have him in matches, obviously. But it's a bit like Roman before he faced Cody. It's like, well, no one's taken it from him for quite a while. It's his first defense, as you say. Yeah. But in someone like Orton, like you are going to get a great near fall from an RKO. That's and they've established that now. Absolutely. The selling it as the RKO is the way that Orton can get to him mm. as well. Like last week when he was talking, like, you'll never hit me with it. And then the distraction and the turnaround into the RKO, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then this week, a lot of people may not have seen it, but at the end of the show, <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> he also did an RKO. But it's like the sort of the only thing that he's got that he's <laughs> managing to get through Gunther's armor of both Gunther being Gunther and like Ludwig Kaiser and things. And they're quite, I quite like the way they're selling that as the sort of disaster that it's should be. You're right. In terms of uh, my experience of watching the show, it ended with an eye poke, but we'll get to that <laughs> in uh, in due course. Uh, we go backstage. Jackie Remnant's there with Seamus. He's got his left hand taped up. Shillelagh attacks from Pete Dunne, of course. Uh, Seamus is ready for a fight, says there's going to be retribution, not the group. Um, and he's got some tricks to teach these young Thundercats. And then he asks Fort Lauderdale if they're ready for a banger. And they were. And my God, did these boys deliver. Yeah. In amongst all this, it was announced it was uh, Ludwig Kaiser versus Randy Orton in the main event. But yeah, Seamus versus Pete Dunne. Uh, obviously, Dunne immediately targets the injury. Uh, Seamus comes back there, knocks him off the apron. Uh, takes a moment to slap hands with Pat McAfee, uh, and that allows Pete Dunne to stamp his bad hand on the steps uh, and take control as we go to a break. When we come back, this was just... Oh, my God. Pete Dunne slapping him in the face, and, uh, well, Seamus is kind of no-selling it and just saying, give me some more, uh, fights back a bit, and then Dunne hits him harder and harder and harder, and then Seamus says, you a butcher, bitch. Oh, my God. <laughs> Great. Uh, so Dunne nailed him with some forearms, Seamus tries to fight back, but Dunn targets the hand and uh, does the 10 beats of the bodron. They never learn, do they? <laughs> um, because Seamus came back and uh, hit him with 20. Um, he did, did the usual bit and then pulled him through and was like, no, nah, a few more, actually. So he just dragged him over the ropes. He was going dangling over the ropes. Like, oh, God. It works so well when they're like former fr well, they're friends, but they're you yeah. know, former friends because they know that they can just really lay it in there. Uh, Dunn avoids a bro kick, tries a moonsault, but Seamus, oh, this was lovely as well. Nails him in midair with a knee lift. Um, sets up for a super white noise off the turnbuckle, but Dunn reverses it into a sit-out powerbomb, puts them both down. And then Pete Dunn grabs Seamus' injured, injured hand, beats it up a bit, shoves it inside the turnbuckle pad and bunches it some more. Uh, so Seamus thinks, oh, God, I'm trapped in the turnbuckle pad. What can I do? He just rips it off. Huge bro kick to Pete Dunne. Uh, one, two, three, uh, pinning Pete Dunne, who still looked pretty happy about attempting to destroy Seamus' hand after the fact. But this is my match of the night by far. Yeah, me too, absolutely. If you haven't watched Raw, this is the, this is the thing you should go back and watch from this show, 100%. Uh, both of them firing on all cylinders. Pete Dunne, I think, is best, for me, like, this is his best performance on the main roster. Could be, yeah. Um, I really, really enjoyed this match. <laughs> like, Seamus was hitting hard. <laughs> uh, and Pete Dunne wasn't holding back himself. The timing on some of the things, like the moonsault into the knee, was absolutely perfect. Mm. Like, some of the dives and stuff. And the kind of, the escalation of violence in terms of just punching each other <laughs> mm. was really good to the point where Seamus was losing it and going for those beats and like dragging him over the top ropes. Really, really great. The bit of 
like Pete Dunn punching him while she- like Seamus is down on his knees. Like he was going for it as well, and Seamus was just taking it all and just the firing up. Seamus is so good. Yeah, like he was still someone I get the credit he deserves. I'll hold my hands up. He was someone who a few years ago I was completely indifferent towards. Yeah. You know, I could get he was far better as a heel, obviously back then. Yeah, and I got what he did, but I was a bit like, eh. And then he just decided to start kicking the crap yeah. out of people. And I, well, basically, what I then thought, Phil, was uh, Seamus. Hey, 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 hey. You all right. <laughs> and it's been strength to strength from there, hasn't it? Like the Brawling yeah. Brutes were, was great he's, as a result of that. And he's then clicked as a babyface now as well. He feels a lot more comfortable mm. in it. Again, another guy who's just being himself. And it, like you can tell it comes across in his promos. And just the sort of babyface, you don't often get like a big muscly dude doing babyface mm. fire comebacks. And he has this, except his fire is just punching people. <laughs> Coincidence that it was following a Gunther segment? Could that be a clue to a future match? I mean, I'd love to see it again. Potentially, they teased at Ludwig, Sheamus again at some mm. point. And if if they do, Orton, Walter at this pay-per-view, and then the next one is like Sheamus, Gunther, like I'd be more than happy. <laughs> they have got bad blood. so They have indeed. I'd be more than happy with that. Uh, but yeah, this was really, really, really good fun. And they're doing the whole thing of like, even on commentary, they were selling big time that Pete Dunne looked great in the match. Like, and he, like at the end of it, like he knew he got to Sheamus, mm. like almost had him. And he was doing the sort of rice mile, like I, I almost had you and I almost broke your arm. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, Triple threat tonight is what he could be in the number one contender for the, he won't be, but he could be the number one contender for the NXT championship. Be. It's um, going to be Joe Hendry. That's what I reckon. <laughs> That's what we talked about in the, the preview earlier on. So here, him, Wesley, who's just turned heel. That'd be weird to face Ethan Page. Yeah. Uh, or, or Pete Dunn. So, anyway. Well. Fingers crossed. Check out our NXT preview for that one. Uh, I'm fascinated by this New Day story. That's what followed. Uh, Odyssey Jones is there. They're obviously in that three-on-three match. And he's warming up with, with Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. And he disappears briefly. And Kingston finally realizes, what's a bit off here? What's going on? Uh, and he says, is this a back? Carrying Cross, and he's like, nope, Carrying Cross isn't the issue right now. Uh, he wishes Kofi had spoken to him about um, bringing in Odyssey Jones. Felt a bit like Kofi Kingston, as we talked about on the preview yesterday, is trying to replace Big E. Didn't like that. And Kofi apologized uh, for not talking to him first and saying, obviously, he's never going to replace Big E in the New Day. Uh, he says, look, just remember what it was like for us then. When we first got started, everyone made fun of us with the New Day, with the new kids on the block sort of thing. Um but we had each other, uh, and we got through it as a result of that and became one of the greatest teams ever. We're family. That's never going to change. Uh, jo- uh, Odyssey Jones is just in the same boat as we were back then. I'm just trying to help him out uh, the way that I wish people had helped us out. And Woods is like, you know what? You're right. I'm the problem. I'll fix it. Uh, and Odyssey Jones comes back in and gives big hug to Xavier Woods, who still looks a little bit like he's putting on a smile rather than actually enjoying this. Yeah, um, I love all of this. The... It feels different, like it feels kind of unique in that the characters are actually kind of showing emotion and mm. vulnerability <laughs> through it uh, and understanding as well, which you don't often see in wrestling, <laughs> funnily enough. Um, but um, but yeah, and then having all of this sort of like serious like conversation about friendships and like accidentally making people feel uncomfortable and things and going, no, no, sorry, that wasn't my intent and things, but doing it all dressed as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is just yes. even better. I and love I don't it. know how they can pull off this. It's absolutely incredible. Um, but yeah, I wasn't completely convinced on the like um, adding Odyssey Jones to this and what it was where mm. it was going to go. But this feels like a really good progression of it. Mm. In that, like now, I'm genuinely intrigued what comes next, especially after how the match went. Yes, I'm more intrigued as to how this goes coming next. But is this like going to like my like fantasy booking head or like kind of goes to not breaking up the new day, but having tensions, having something happen to the point where maybe you end up with Kofi versus Xavier, but then Big E returns to make oh. everyone be friends again. Oh, yeah. And it all ends up being a big happy moment and Big E's back and the new day are back together and like the force is restored and positivity wins the day. Yes, exactly. I think it, it, it's astonishing that they've got me to believe that the new day could even split after everything. Yeah. Cause I think if you just said, especially after everything they've said themselves, yes, yeah, you never have bought it, and you no offense to him until we discovered his patter. Um, we never thought it, that Carrion Cross would be the catalyst <laughs> for that. He'd be like, turn it in. This is like when Kane was like, come on, John Cena, why don't be a heel? I'm not going to do it now and not for you. Um, but he's done it. He's like, 
got in the in the mind of Xavier Woods. Like you say, I don't see necessarily him going. I'm bollocks to all this. Ten years down the drain. Uh, don't don't tease me with the big E thing. There was did you see the thing from the some press conference. I think it might be in this fan, Fanatics Fest thing that they were doing, where it was like Drew, who's your dream match? And he's like looking at Big E, and I'm like, Ugh. why would you say that? We don't know what's going on, and I hate speculating on this because he's such a lovely bloke, but he might not be able to ever do this again. Yeah, and he's happy doing what he's doing now. I'll talk more about Big E in a bit. Actually, I've got mm -hmm. an idea for him. The old spice advert. Yeah. I've not seen the old what? Spice advert. What? Do it right now. Right now, e. live on camera. Biggie is literally in an old spice advert with Azalea and Dawkins. Hello. Oh. Is this a new thing? When did this happen? Oh, I've <laughs> just seen a picture of it. Just the, just, already. yeah, just the screen grab I can see. From from Reddit <laughs> saying what is Big E doing? I'm I'm gonna save this for later, but uh, they are perfect for an old spice. Yeah, advert you're right. As well. <laughs> oh man. Uh, speaking of that, uh, Fanatics Fest, they air some clips from it and uh, show them handing out well belts like candy. Effect, basically, <laughs> you get a belt. You get a belt. You a celebrity. You get a belt for your sports team that you play for or support or whatever. Um, Fun fact: I have, you know, the did the entrances set up so people could like come out and do your own. Entrance. Yes, I went to a WrestleMania Access where they had that set up years ago for WrestleMania 28, uh, and I will have it somewhere, a video. I'll see if I can find it and like tweet it out later. Oh, please! Of me doing the Santino Morello entrance. Oh my god! <laughs> with the trombone. <laughs> so I'll see if I can find that. Well, what could wearing a luchador mask as well? Cause... If not. What, Why not? What Culture Live Show in just a few days' time, <laughs> Phil Chambers. Whatculture.com forward slash tickets. Uh, tickets still available. I can't wait for Sunday for that. Yeah. Mitch, you can get yourself a nice new wristband. This is literally just, just arrived, arrived today. today. It says What Culture Wrestling and it's purple and gold. And where buy it. where will I be able to buy that? I've just been on whatculture.com forward slash tickets and I couldn't see any links. Oh, they're for not it. gonna be on there, you what? idiot. Go to the actual live show. Oh! We're gonna have merch available and you can buy it with money. Foam fingers? <laughs> Foam fingers, t shirts, stickers, posters. And wristbands. Right, but it's good, and, and I'll love wearing that, and I'll, you know, really excited to go to that and then go to All In, but I really want to kind of show it off in the globe. Uh, <laughs> is there any way that I can do that as well, Phil? Is there anything going on after All In? Well, the, you might be able to. If you've already got tickets to Sweet Din Disco, then oh. you'll definitely be able to. But if you don't... Do not fear, because you can show off your wristband in the club <laughs> by arriving early on the door, because there will be limited tickets available. The exact so same excited. venue as our thing, Crystal Club, two minutes walk away from Wembley Stadium. Yeah, I saw Sweet Chin Disco yeah. sharing a thing on their socials of quite how close it was, and I was like, yeah, yeah that is <laughs> Literally ridiculous. on the corner of Wembley Stadium. God, I can't wait for Sunday. I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, the air clips from Fanatics Fest. I want to give a shout out whilst I remember, because I saw a lovely story on Twitter. It was some... Stuff we talked about yesterday with, like, issues with Cody and not him, not issues with him, but just the organization and people, unfortunately, having to miss out on meet and greets as a result of that because he had to leave to go to a live show. And da -da 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 -da. Anyway, I saw a lovely story on Twitter from a person whose name completely escapes me, but they were really excited about meeting Cody, got cancelled. They were like, we can either give you a refund or I think you can go and do a meet and greet with someone else. And uh, they ended up going to see Rhea Ripley. Uh, but they were devastated, obviously, with all this. They were sort of in tears. Drew McIntyre, they bumped into as they were all reorganizing this. And he was actually, for once, lovely compared to what he's like here, uh, <laughs> checking if they were all right and, and, you know, chatting to them and stuff. And then they met Rhea Ripley, who was brilliant, of course. And they uh, Rhea took their wristband to give to Cody. So it all worked out in the end, which is just Fantastic. Lovely. So I, I like to hear stuff like that. There was a great Brom Breaker video package on Raw. Uh, and then Ivy Nile is there working out backstage. Chad Gable's back. Uh, they're so the Creed brothers. They're so happy. This is the vision Chad Gable had. Uh, Ivy's like, yep, I gave uh, Maxine a chance. Um, but uh, Chad's like, yeah, bollocks to her. Um, you're the real deal. You're the pit bull. Maxine was holding you back. Uh, after you beat Maxine, we'll handle the Wyatt Six. How are they made? American made, which will catch on. I'm already... <laughs> Definitely well. Uh, the uh, Ivy Niles promo didn't make a huge amount of sense. Nope. But whatever. Yep. It's fine. I'm sure we'll get... We got there. It's well, we, we didn't get the match either. Um I, I, well, I don't remember a bell ringing, if, if that's the no case. No idea, but Maxime Dupree looked like a badass. Yes. <laughs> Ivan Al does her entrance. She's like, Maxime Dupree, turn it in. 
drop kicks her from behind. <laughs> Jesus, Maxine. Chucks her around ringside. They get back in there and then... Why is sick stuff? It's been suplex on the outside. Like, yes. Oh, come on. Should mention that. Um, and suddenly America made it like, well, we know what happens here. They dive in to protect Ivy Nile and then creeping across is there. Uh, she attacks Ivy Nile. Uh, the rest of the white members are there. They all take out America made and isolate Chad Gable, who takes an oh my God. unbelievable bump yet again for a sister Abigail from Uncle Howdy. And they're going to have a match next week, right? Yep. Does seem like it. I am kind of fascinated. I'm loving how they're presenting the Wyatt Six at the minute. With the, they've got all the spooky stuff, but it's rooted in actual humans. Yes. <laughs> Which kidding. makes so much more sense when it comes into actual wrestling matches. Because that wrestling match they had, was it last week or the week before? Uh, it was last badass. Week? Yeah. It yeah. was really, really good fun. Uh, and I'm sure that Bo Dallas versus Chad Gable is going to be ace as well. Chad Gable is going to have his selling shoes yeah. on for him, I feel, um, to sort of get this guy over. Uh, but yeah, I... Loving it. It's really good. They've, they've nailed the supernatural side of things, like, surprisingly mm. well. Yeah, I, I, my concern is still, stop beating American Made because they're <laughs> awesome. Yeah. and they get. Yeah, it doesn't exactly help that a brand new stable is the one that they've decided to beat a lot. But, but I suppose, hopefully, uh, maybe even Chad Gale was thinking this in real life, when their gaze shifts to someone else who they perceive to have done wrong, American Made can go back to being... Bell ends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Terror Twins do a promo next. Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest. Uh, Rhea warns Liv. She's become the one, the one thing that she hates, a discount Rhea Ripley. Uh, and at Bash in Berlin, the Terror Twins are going to put them through the mat. We got a response from the new Judgment Day Street Dre-ish a little bit later on. And then CM Punk comes out. Uh, a little bit of a spoiler of what's about to happen because he had a leather strap over his shoulders. Uh, and he comes in and con congratulates the Florida Panthers on winning the Stanley Cup. Ice hockey? Yeah. Good. Uh, no idea. <laughs> he talks about uh, spending time at that Fanatics Fest thing. Um, who uh, There was someone there who talked to him about the hot streak WWE's on right now. Uh, and they asked CM Punk why he thinks that is. And it's because of you. The fans, not just you, Me. Phil. Uh, all of us, in fact. He talks about meeting great fans. Um, Pointed to the fans behind the camera. That must have been weird, eh? <laughs> hey, people here. Um, <laughs> he talks about uh, a lovely young lady in a wheelchair who was first in line for a picture with him. She got up out of the, the wheelchair and walked to him and told him that she just defeated cancer, which is always a, a lovely story to hear. Uh, and that's a source of strength for punk. Um, he met someone from Taiwan who flew 15 hours for maybe 15 seconds with CM Punk. Could have just spent more time with her, I thought. I was like, oh. Bit us, but you know, <laughs> rules are rules. No. On you go. Uh, there was another guy who travelled five thousand seven hundred eighty-five miles from Jordan just to see him. Wow, um, it means it means everything to him. Obviously, it means uh, something to everyone in the back. Uh, but it really means something to him because he missed all of us for ten years, and now he's excited to come to Florida for the first time and share some news. Uh, the fans drive him. And uh, he pulls out a bunch of bracelets that fans have made, uh, calls himself Taylor Swift for men. <laughs> uh, and he references the fact that, obviously, he, Drew's got his bracelet. Um, uh, the, these are just like the ones that Drew took off his uh, lifeless body in his hometown um, and means a lot to him. That's the love he says. Let's talk about the hate. Um, Punk said that McIntyre thought he could wash his hands of him after winning at SummerSlam, but McIntyre made it personal. Uh, McIntyre's obsessed with him uh, and wearing that bracelet with his beautiful wife's name on it. Um, so he's got a gift for McIntyre, a big leather bracelet, strap. Um, and at Bash in Berlin, he announced there's going to be a strap match as long as McIntyre wasn't too scared. Uh, they're going to be <laughs> tethered together and they're going to have to do the gimmick. Did they do this before with the strap matches? or is this? I, I can't remember what WWE have Done. I feel like there was one with Carrion Cross in. Yeah, but not, not not the touch in the corners gimmick. Yeah, I can't remember. The last that. one I remember that was like Cena and JBL or something. That yeah. Just off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, you got to touch four corners. Um, Old school. Uh, that's not why he wanted the strap match, though. He wanted it so he could whip that bitch. <laughs> that's two of three bitches. There's more coming. Uh, 
and he wanted to leave lasting scars that McIntyre, so that McIntyre would never forget his name. This brings out Drew, uh, who's thought all the week, all week about the violence uh, last week, and he wanted to bring it to Punk. And now Punk's challenging him to a strap match. He said, "Have you started drinking, Punk? Uh, have you seen me a strap match? I accept." Uh, he said, "That's next week, though." Um, but I need a receipt for last week. How about a little teaser? You lose the strap, and let's give him a show. And Punk says, "You can have the strap." Just give me my bracelet. And Drew teases taking it off. But McIntyre laughs and says, no, you're a liar. I know if I gave you the bracelet, I, you'd still whip me with the strap, which, to be fair, Punk didn't deny. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, probably. Uh, McIntyre said, April and Larry are safer at home with me. Uh, and Punk warned him that he'd not be safe in Berlin because it's not me who's attached to you, it's you that's attached to me. Although he sort of flubbed the line and that didn't yeah. really get the reaction he was hoping for. But I can't wait for this strap match. Yeah, the match is going to be absolutely fantastic. They're just going to beat the hell out of each <laughs> other and it's going to be great. I think this promo, like I liked that um, they kind of explained the sort of bracelet law <laughs> a yes. little bit more. Yes. Because I think like that's what, like some people have, had a hard time with this feud going over. Oh, they just feuding over a bracelet, but it's like more about the symbolic, yes. yeah, about what it means. Um, and like Punk's promo last week helped with that a bit about um, like yeah, saying it, it's the meaning behind it. But then I think a lot of what CM Punk did in this was to address that again and just go look. It's about what this symbolizes. Yes, yeah, and a lot of that like build up throughout his, his promo was for that. Um, so I like that they kind of addressed that and sort of got that out of the way a little bit, but. It also felt like after the highs of this feud over the last year, mm. like, oh, since, like, since the Royal Rumble, um, like it's been like super high and super hot. This one felt a little bit cooler. Than yeah, that's one. fair. Um, which I guess they just, they had to announce the strap, but it was like just some of the barbs they were throwing at each other. Especially because there's no physicality and that's where the, the essence of this sort of lies. Yeah. And it's like last week, at least, like he got to like beat him with the strap and stuff a bit. And this, it just felt like a little bit of a come down, but I'm sure it'll be straight back up again. And the match is obviously going to be amazing. Yeah. I, you know, I really enjoyed their match at SummerSlam. And I, but I understand why it was divisive to some people. Sidge wasn't a fan. Um, but I, I, I really liked it as well. Yeah. I, I, I think they have, and I, I know I bang this drum a lot, but I think they have learned, uh, earned the privilege of get, saying, okay. You may not have liked this aspect of the story, but that's clearly not the end. And I think you can see now how they've laid this out and how they're going to get to bad blood. Where they go after bad blood, I've no idea. They're obviously going to go <laughs> their separate ways. But, like, yes, it was more story um, for the the SummerSlam match of, like, yeah, the obsession with the bracelet. But it's, again, not just a piece of you know, material yeah. or whatever. It was what it represents to, to Punk. And then you're going to have the strap match. That's going to be incredibly violent, which is arguably why they held off a little bit on it on the yep. SummerSlam match. But also, when one assumes Punk wins that, Drew's going to say, well, you didn't pin me. You didn't pin me. I pinned you. You just tapped four corners of the ring because you got lucky or whatever. Yeah. And that's how it's going to escalate into Hell in a Cell, which is going to be preposterous, yeah. as, we, as we've mentioned before. So uh, you're uh, fully healed, are you, Phil? Okay, we'll see about that. Welcome back, kid. <laughs> at some point, Drew's got to just destroy that bracelet and like have the little pieces of it go oh, flying, yeah. surely, for the visual of it all down. And like Punk just like, what have you done? Is this going to bring AJ Lee back? That's all I care about. Oh, God, could you imagine? Some at Hell in a Cell. Don't know what she'd do. Kennel like, from but... Hell could bring Larry. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. I'm fully on board. <laughs> Uh, we got a tape promo from Liv Morgan and Dominic Mysterio, who uh, says he wants to face Damien Priest one on one tonight. Mm. Uh, do you? Do you, Dom? Yeah, I'm not the same guy you remember. What? Because you've got a mustache now. <laughs> uh, leave Rhea in the back. I'll leave the Judgment Day behind. When you go against me, <laughs> if you're man enough, uh I did a podcast uh, Q&A thing yesterday, and I talked about how I think Dominic Mysterio is one of the best heels in the business right now. <laughs> like, he ain't winning a world title. Uh, I think the most you can stretch to, I know he won stuff in NXT, is like a US title. He's not winning the IC title either, but yeah. US title maybe. But he's so perfect, and I can't believe how the chemistry that him and Liv have considering how well it worked with Rhea, you were like, well, anything else is going to be a watered-down version. Yeah. They're just unbearable, aren't they? Yeah, it's absolutely great. I really like these two lots of promos as well. Like, it, they kept the Judgment Day stuff a lot more simple than they have mm -hmm. done in the previous weeks. Like, it's kind of dominated Raw for quite a few weeks, and there was a lot less of it on this show. 
Um, but at the same time, like they were kind of old school, the promos in terms of like, just mm -hmm. I'm going to cut a promo at you and then you're going to cut a promo at, uh, at me. And it was like, but I just kind of liked that as something a little bit different. It was, they were shot quite nicely in the back. Both of them, like Liv and Dominic has great chemistry, but like Damien Priest and Rhea yeah. have great chemistry too. And great chemistry that's completely switched around now that they're yeah. like babyface from what they were in Judgment Day. All of a sudden it's this whole new dynamic between not the two. They are intimidating, but they're not the intimidating that they were. Yeah. Uh, just in a whole new angry babyface kind of way. Also fascinating to hear Priest talk about when Edge was kicked out of the group and they were like, uh oh, yeah. how's this going to work? And <laughs> my God, look how it's turned out in the end. All they needed to do was get rid of the big chair. Who and, knew? And, and the grit. And the grit. <laughs> and just be dumb. But yeah. Be dumb idiots backstage. <laughs> yeah, get rid of uh, uh, Adam Copeland's big vein on his forehead and just have some stupid bollocks with Finn Balor. <laughs> I was going to say, stop it for Finn Balor's stupid faces. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, the six-man tag came next. Um, Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, Odyssey Jones versus Karrion Cross and AOP with Scarlet and... <laughs> Paul Ellering uh, at ringside. Um, just a scissage, isn't here. Um, Kingston sends Cross into the corner early on for some running clothesline. Scarlet, obviously, though, runs distraction. Um, Acom comes in, gets a Death Valley driver. That sends us to a break. When we come back, Kofi's in trouble, but he finally breaks free. Xavier's like, Kofi, my best friend, tag me. And uh, I think Odyssey Jones was doing something on, uh, at ringside and then hopped back up closer to Kofi and look at him. So it makes sense, but also I think it's just such a brilliant piece of storytelling because it's not the old-fashioned thing of like, if you watch the show, you'd know about these secret conversations or yeah. you'd, this confusion would be cleared up in a second. In one. Like, he's got this thing in the back of his head. Like, is, is this everything? Is everything all right? And he's like, cool, Kofi, tag me. And Kofi just dives and obviously tags... Odyssey Jones in, uh, and Woods is like, oh. um, but then Odyssey Jones completely justifies that tag by cleaning house. He gets taken down by Cross, though. Kingston comes in and hits Trouble in Paradise. Um, I think Woods hit a diving elbow drop on Razar, um, and then Odyssey Jones hit that awesome spinning side slam on, I think it was Aikam, uh, to get the one, two, three, and they celebrate. Wood seems to be happy with the victory, but now I'm I'm not looking at anything else. I'm just looking at him. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, like, not the greatest match in the world, but it wasn't about that. It was no. about progressing the story. I think the biggest thing is the winners, the, like the New Day won it. And that, but what the hell is, happens with Karrion Cross now? Like, did you see they did one of the WWE.com exclusive oh, interviews yeah. after the show of like Karrion Cross and his group? And I like, I can't remember the exact line that uh, he said he was talking about. Like, oh, get New Day one day, <laughs> you kids. Uh, but then Scarlet was like, oh, anything you touch dies anyway. Uh, so like, you can like leave them or something. And I was, it was like, I can't remember the exact wording, which is annoying me now. But it felt like, oh, you can just forget about them. They're gonna die anyway because. Like you've been a part of it. Well, we can just move on with what. Oh, else we okay. Do. So I'm like, wait, that's that can't be that finished on TV because that would be super strange. But maybe it was. Maybe I just read the promo wrong or something. Maybe she just. He's not going to fight him anymore because that brings them closer together. Because <laughs> yeah. he's just going to let it's it fester for they've, a bit. They've set whatever it is in motion. Now it's all going to pay off. I don't know. But maybe it was. Yeah. Because uh, what was the line that? Reading it back on my notes, I suddenly thought, ah. Oh, you're right, I'm the problem, I'll fix it. Yeah. Which sounds initially like, yeah, yeah you know, I, I'm sorry, that's my fault, I'll yeah. take it. But if it's but deeper I'll than fix that. fix it, seems like he's going to do something. So, yeah, it feels more about the New Day now and much less about carrying across and all those yeah. up, which is really strange. It's gonna, <laughs> so it's just like, ah, move just, on. Just move chill on. out and work, watch at home as it all falls to pieces <laughs> and then be like, done yeah, it. We did that. Another one <laughs> of those bloody carrying cross things where he's like, well, my work here is done. <laughs> you didn't do anything, <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> um, but unfortunately, Phil, um, with the the creepiness uh, of the uh, final testament and all their darkness, that brings us to quite a scary segment of the uh, the Raw podcast. We uh, set this up on the Raw preview and deliver it on the Raw review because, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for the Raw redo. <laughs> Raw Riddle give you the creeps or? No. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, you do quite often, but not specifically <laughs> the Raw Riddle. 
Maybe I'll do a raw riddle at the uh, the live show. <laughs> Maybe. Get your I don't want to give tickets. Tickets. Yeah. tickets. Get, a live get your tickets, riddle. but not if you get the creeps, you know, because <laughs> we don't want it. This, this, that's fair warning now. You may get the creeps. You're going to change your entrance from Rebel Queens to the Death Six. Never. <laughs> I want the extended new version, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Five minute intro. <laughs> Jesus, get on with it. We've got, we've got to get to all in in a bit. Um, so, Phil, uh, to test your. Noggin, I'm going to hit you with this. Um, the raw riddle this week. What has 13 hearts but no other organs? Um, 13 hearts but no other organs. Got, this cow's got uh, four stomachs, hasn't it? Shawn Michaels' is trousers. It's good. Not right. <laughs> um... You do always have to have what I have written down. Nicholas, you have, feel free to help <laughs> Phil if you if you can, or if you're not too creeped out uh, by the raw riddle. Okay. <laughs> that's a no. <laughs> okay. I'm afraid I have to tell you, Phil Chambers. No, dear, that's wrong. Mm. What has 13 hearts but no other organs? Let us know in the comment section or on X at what culture WWE if you got this or if you were creeped out. <laughs> the answer is... A deck of cards. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's definitely been an answer for a different riddle. Spades, but no soil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You. What is what gets cut on a table? Yeah. Uh, there you go. So there's the answers were hiding in plain sight. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> yes, one has 13 <laughs> spades but digs no holes. A deck of cards. No one told the Dadley, so I'm going to use it again. Uh, right. Ripley warns uh, Damien Priest as he's heading to the ring that it's probably a trap. I don't think that Dominic Mysterio wants to legitimately face you one-on-one, -on -one, to which Damien Priest goes, yeah, I get it. <laughs> but it's still if I can do it anyway. Yeah, there's a chance I can get my hands on Dominic Mysterio. I'll do it. Um... And they're not going to stop until they pass judgment on the judgment hey, day. See what they did there? Because uh, it's it's like the name, but like he used it against them. I'm I'm annoyed that they got rid of Street Trash. Street Trash. And lovely tribute, a bit like what we got with, or oh, a longer one actually here on Raw uh, to the late great uh, Afa Anoahi. Uh, and then Cole announces sold out thirteen thousand seven hundred eighteen people. Uh, and we see ruthless Robbie Lawler, he of UFC fame. Um, me and Nicholas talked a little bit about him on the NXT preview. Love Robbie Lawler. If you're unaware, an amazing story, a, a truly phenomenal fighter for the UFC. I don't think he's going to come in, but you're telling me there's a chance. I don't know. I skipped this bit. Okay. Um, <laughs> before we get this no DQ match, which someone predicted on the Raw preview yesterday. Who was that? Oh, it was me, because it was me just talking to myself. Uh, <laughs> Postman Pierce tries to talk Miz out of facing Bronson Reed. He said that I was basically going to suspend him uh, until, you at, until you asked for this match. Uh, and Miz said, yeah, to be honest, I don't know if I even want this match, but I want payback for what uh, he did to Truth. I don't have a lot of friends in this industry, uh, but I'm going to fight for the ones that I do. One. That he does. I didn't want to do this. thinking that, Miz, with the, with the plural. <laughs> I have to do this. Uh, so, yes, we get a no DQ match. The Miz versus Bronson Reed. Uh, the Miz is very fired up and uh, tries his hardest initially. Rolls out the ring. Uh, Reed follows him. But Miz just grabs a chair, twats him with it a few times. <laughs> to which... I actually suggested this in a preview yesterday. I was like, I don't want Bronson Reed to use any weapons. I want him to be like, you don't need weapons when you look <laughs> like me. He smacks it out of his hand. Uh, Miz posts him, grabs a kendo stick and smacks him across the back. Um, they're in the ring at this point. Reed just catches another one, close hinds Miz and just snaps it in half like it's a toothpick or something. That was the moment uh, Michael Cole, I think, made the local medical facility jab that everyone's talking about today. Um, oh, yeah, and amongst all this, uh, Miz had taken everything that was under the ring and chucked it into the ring, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, table, <clears throat> there was a table in there, and there was a trash can. Um, I suppose technically this is him using a weapon, but <laughs> it's just like, well, it's there. He picks up Miz, body slams him um, onto the trash can, and then to take us through a break, great spot this, just sits on a chair with his boot on Miz's head. <laughs> laughing away. Yeah. 
Uh, when we come back, Miz fights back, twats Reedy in the gut with a chair, climbs up top, sorts, spins and does a tornado DDT onto it and gets a whole one count off the back of it. Hits some more kendo stick shots on Bronson Reed. Uh, the table's propped up in the corner. Uh, Miz tries hitting his skull crushing finale onto that, but Reed blocks it and puts Miz through the table with a Death Valley driver. Follows up with a tsunami. One, two, three. This was the bit. Ah, oh, crap. I'm like, kill him. He's meant to be the baby face. I love seeing this move. It's amazing what he's managed to do. And then Bronson Reed reverts the type and goes keeping him with tsunamis then until he's <laughs> dead or spitting up blood. He uh, goes up top, but who should come out to make the save for the Miz? But Braun Strowman. Oh. Rah, the trade's going, choo-choo. Um, he comes down to the ring and Bronson Reed, they have a face-off. They don't touch, but Bronson Reed doesn't back down. My God, I want to watch this fight. It's going to be stupid. Yep, this is really good. Uh, match yourself, I quite enjoyed. I yeah. think this is like best sort of baby face version of the Miz you could possibly hope for. I still much prefer him as a heel. Yeah. Obviously, he's just more natural that way. You just want Rick to Flair hate gave guy. me the figure four. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Um, but yeah, I think this is the best sort of version of the fired up baby face Miz. Yeah. Um, and the match was just just a good fun weapons. Match. Yeah. Nothing special about it, but just really fun and entertaining. And Bronson Reed looked amazing in it. I think the finish could have been slightly Better because they did like um, Miz like did like a flying nothing and then like Bronson Reed caught him on his shoulders and went for the DVD but then he got off and Miz tried yeah, to like push him into it and then they reversed it into something else and then reversed it oh tried the skull crushing crown and then reversed that and then oh into the Death Valley Driver like if he just caught him straight away table yeah. into the Death Valley Driver yeah that would have been cleaner like, cleaner much more forceful and like way better for Bronson Reed I feel and just more of a moment as well because it would have been just so cool like catch the guy and then just straight into a table would have been pretty cool. It is mad that. We now see a graphic, which is Bronson Reed versus Braun Strowman. And I care more about Bronson Reed in that. That's <laughs> yeah. wild and from a few weeks ago. I think ago. Bronson need, Reed kind of needs to run through Braun Strowman yeah. for it as well. Like, like, oh, bollocks. Yeah, like there'll be a better back and forth, obviously. But like, I, I think this would be, if you can, if they manage to do it, where Bronson Reed can run through Braun Strowman in like a really fun, like eight minute match or something like that, where they just beat the hell out of each other. But like Bronson Reed is obviously like taking like getting the best from the mm -hmm. match and like that is, uh, the moment you go on from that it's like well i beat bronze like bronze Strowman like that yeah. easily what what the hell else have, have all you people got uh and then that's it like bronson Reed's kind of sold forever <laughs> nice of uh, bronze Strowman to save miz because you remember in the was it the pando it was like we're gonna do miz and morrison versus bronze Strowman because they poured i don't uh, know paint on his car or some crap i had blocked this yeah. out yeah, I do remember that. That was good. Now, didn't they try and gunge him or something? And they gunged. Yeah, I think they did gunge him. Was it that one? When they, I don't know. All the bollocks yeah. WWE from that. Yes, era. Kayla. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Kayla. Hey, Kayla. <laughs> Ridiculous. Was that back when he actually had the choo choo train noises as well? Yeah. if you time. remember. What a time. <laughs> Stupid is a stupid does. Stupid uh, someone, is a stupid does. Someone once Shame. said that. <laughs> she <laughs> Seamus and Mr. Jackie Redman, his hand hurts, but he's going to have a pint of Guinness to sort himself out. I do buy in that, isn't there? Yeah, I don't think that's a healthy way of dealing with your problems, Seamus, <laughs> but, you know, you do you. Each to their own. <laughs> uh, Ludwig Kaiser interrupts uh, and says, you shouldn't be interviewing him, you should be interviewing me instead. I'm in the main event, he's just opening... Uh, maybe I'll kick your ass once I'm done with Randy Orton. And, and Seamus is like, we're one all. I'll happily finish my trilogy, but now I'm going to go and get a drink and watch you get RKO'd, which was very prescient of him. Uh, yep. We, knew. we got the uh, Bron Breaker interview with Kathy Kelly. Uh, she asked what's next for him after he beat Sami Zayn to conclusively uh, retain the Intercontinental Championship. He, he said, I'm happy I went to a highly educated university because uh, he's heard there's going to be a tournament starting next week to determine his next challenger, and he knows that's funny to him because he knows Postman Pierce is trying to slow him down because he's going progressing too fast. Um, he says, it's not my fault I'm a badass. It's not my fault I'm a genetic freak more talented than anyone in the locker room. It's not my fault that the dogs are barking every city that I go to. <laughs> you could actually hear the crowd, which is really good. Uh, he earned the Intercontinental title and he warned whoever wins the tournament, I'm going to spear you through the floor and give you the beating of a lifetime. And that will be my fault, he says. Yeah, I won't want to win this tournament. Nope. 
Uh, this is a good Bond Breaker promo. Everything you need from that kind of character. Just like, yep, you believe it. Like, everything he says, yeah, you're going to do that. Yes. Well, I can see that. Off, off you go. Good He's luck. Good luck, anyone. Anyway. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just lay down in the tournament. Yeah. But we found out one of the competitors a little bit later on. Before that, another non-match. Damien Priest versus Dominic Mysterio. Uh, Dom enters. Damien Priest comes out and goes, yeah, I know what's coming. Uh, because Carlito tries to attack him. He drops him. He also knocks down J.D. McDonough and Finn Balor. Uh, he I love the timing of that. Like, Carlito running up behind him. He just, like, literally just goes, oh, <laughs> straight down. <laughs> like he had a rear view mirror. I think he was <laughs> Gun. Sorted. Yeah. Uh, he tries to choke slam Balor, but Carlito saves him. So uh, Carlito and McDonough die. And uh, Balor manages to bail. Rhea Ripley appears behind Dominic in the ring. Huge pop. She headbutts him. Priest drops him with the right hand. Ripley, there were, I saw a tweet about this. I do apologize for whoever sent it. Ripley seemed so excited to clear the announce table. She almost big showed her way out of the ring. <laughs> um, she sets, so she clears the table, grabs Dom, sets him up for the riptide, and then Liv Morgan. Tell they've been working closely together and developed a bit of a relationship because she... Battered her with a chair shot. Um, Priest tries to fight back, but the numbers of the rest of the street dress catches up to him. Backstabber by Carlito, and they hold Priest to watch as Liv sends Rhea into the post shoulder first and then over the table. And Bala hits Priest with a coup de gras. Uh, Morgan hit Ripley with oblivion. Dom hit a frog splash to leave the Judgment Day standing tall. Uh, and after a break, Bala said, This is just a taste of what's going to happen in Berlin. Uh, and Liv Morgan, get your bingo card out, says, Dom's all man, and I'm going to make Rhea Ripley my bitch in Berlin. Hey, yeah, there's the third one. It. Good stuff, this. Yeah, really, really good fun. Uh, they, I mean, they telegraphed it themselves with the Damien Re Priest Rhea Ripley promo, which I also kind of like, because that's like, well, yeah, I know it's a trap, but I just want to get my hands on him in any way, shape, or form yeah. that I can. So that's like... Hell of like great, yeah, baby face. He's just gonna go out there, just doesn't matter what happens. So, like, as I get a little piece of dog, mm -hmm. I'll be happy. Uh, and then obviously, the numbers game you can't fight numbers in wrestling, but yeah, the chair shot she walloped her, they're throwing her into the ring post as well. She just hurled her into the ring post. Um, and it's just, I'm fascinated by what the match is. People were chanting for Jay, weren't they? As yeah, well, yeah, to get it to come out. Yeah, you've got a chant in another point of this show yes. as well, didn't you? I can't remember when it was. But, yeah, what the match is going to look like, the mixed tag thing, like, they have to let Rhea get her hands on Dominic yes. at some point. Like, they can't do the w like the old WWE thing of the guys can't touch yeah, the women yeah. and the women can't touch the guys because Rhea needs to kick the crap out of Dominic in that match. It would be funny. I know we, the, it was controversial at the time, but I think it, it worked. The I mean, it's a dreadful storyline, but uh, the, what was it, Corbin... And Lacey Evans versus, of course, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch. Yeah. Two people who look like they'd never even met each other, let alone are in a relationship <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Regardless of that, the, it was at the end of days he hit uh, Becky with. Yeah. yeah. That was awesome yeah. in the con context that it was. Yeah. I would like <laughs> Dom, Dom, uh, Dominic Mysterio to try and hit Rhea with something and her to just stop mid-move and go, you kidding me? <laughs> what? <laughs> or just, yeah, or whether he just climbs to the top rope to do a frog splash and she just gets up. <laughs> yeah. You're really stupid. I'm. It's going to be so I love this card match. already for Bash in Berlin. Anyway, um, what followed was the uh, triple threat tag team match. It was the Unholy Union versus Damage Control versus the Pure Fusion Collective. Thoughts on that name? It's the name. Yep. It's definitely a name. <laughs> uh, so that's Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark, the Ministry of Starkness, as they should be called. EO Sky and Kyrie Sane versus uh, Alba Fire and Isla Dorm. Uh, I think we went to a break. This is fast. It felt like everyone got their entrance and then they went, oh, that's 10 seconds. Time for a break. <laughs> um, anyway, when we come back, EO Sky, oh awesome, God. hot tag. Uh, the crowd are really into this. Um, she just runs wild. It felt like they like before this match, someone had gone up to EO Sky and um, Carrie Sane and just said, look, we've turned your baby face. We're not quite sure why. <laughs> yes. But we've done it now. Can you just go out there and be awesome? Yeah. And they were like, Yes, or, or yes, yeah. we can do. Or I've heard some people saying, um, you can't go. Um, <laughs> I don't want to go and prove it out there and do some mad diving drop kick spots and then flip, yeah, flexing and all that. Anyway, that's exactly what happened. Um, Kyrie Sane and Eo Sky hit Alba Fire with a superplex off the middle rope, but Isla Dawn breaks up the cover. Kyrie Sane spears Alba Fire. Uh, Sonya Deville kept getting involved, of course. 
Harry Sane knocked her off the apron. That allows Baszler and Stark to take over. Uh, but Sane drops them with a flying crossbody. Uh, Kyrie and Shayna exchange strikes. Baszler tries to recure a few to clutch. Uh, Sane escapes, hits a back fist. Uh, goes up, insane elbow, but doesn't realize that Isla Dawn has tagged herself in. Um, Baszler catches Sane in a cure of to clutch, but Dawn hits her from behind with a backstabber, holds her in place. Alba Fire hits the senton bomb, covers Baszler, one, two, three. No surprise, really, the only Holy Union retained. I talked about this on the preview, that it feels like if anyone's taken the titles back off them, it's uh, Jade Cargill yeah. and Bianca Belair. Yeah, 100%. No no shocker with the, um, the finish. But again, it's like it got a bit more time than you would expect yeah. normally with this kind yeah. of a match, uh, uh, which was always nice to see. But it's like it feels like feels like there's a renewed focus on the women's division, like the tag division, which mm-hmm. we've been saying for ages, and there is. But there also needs to be reasoning behind all of this, and there's very, very little of it at the minute. Yes. So like storyline wise, really not very good, and like turns that have just happened, and you're like, well, yeah, I guess they're facing now, whatever. But the actual match was really, really good fun. It was a showcase for um, damage yeah. control. Um, the bit where it, it was definitely something went wrong, but like uh, EOS guy went to like throw Kyrie Sane like out, and I think she was meant to like hit the top rope and then jump off or something, but she didn't quite go far <laughs> enough and kind of landed on the top rope and just went, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, I don't know how she pulled it off because like. She hit it, but, like, she stayed dead straight. Like, her entire body, yeah. like, whatever core strength she engaged there is just insane. And, like, she just went, like, a big rotation <laughs> onto everyone. And then she landed on her feet and was like, yeah! <laughs> like, oh, I think even she was surprised how that happened. But it was really, really, it was mad. But I don't know how it happened. But yeah. well done for saving that, because holy cow. And I suppose a good way to keep uh, damage control and, I'm just going to call the Ministry of Starkness, um, <laughs> keep them busy until, oh, please, crossing everything, Dakota Kai gets better soon. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Such a shame. That, that. definitely sucks timing wise. But yeah, great for EO Sky and yeah. Harry Sane. They looked great in this. Good reminder of how great they are. Um, and also, just the champs actually getting wins. Hey! It's also, it's also quite nice. <laughs> yeah. It's been a, it's been a while. Um, <laughs> Jackie Redman interviews Jay Uso, talks about reuniting with Sami Zayn as a team. But he says, look, Sami, quite rightly, is taking some time off to clear his head. He's putting, putting in work week after week. He's going to be back with a vengeance. Um, but before he left, he told me to go for goal without him. That's why I'm entering the IC title tournament. Uh, and the next time I'm in your city, uh, I will have the title on my shoulder. Yeet! I bet he doesn't. I'll bet he doesn't too. I f- it's weird, the Jey Uso stuff, because he's been in and around the IC title scene for ages yeah. now, but never really had a proper shot where you think, oh, he might actually have a chance at this. <laughs> and it's not going to happen against Bron Breaker either, because it's no. way too early to take the title off Bron Breaker. But also... Jey Uso, like, he's not been on TV that much. Like, he could really do with a big, high-profile win. So yeah. I don't know where they're going with this, but I guess at least it's something for him to do. And now yeet is actually a, a Scrabble word, as Michael Cole. Good point. I forgot to mention <laughs> that. So, does. so at least you can use yeet in your Scrabbling now. So that's good. That's going to cause a row at Christmas, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun, actually. I mean, I think he, I think he wins the IC title tournament. Yeah, um, yeah, I could see that. Because they're going to yeah make a thing of like he's never won a singles title. He's yeah. won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. He's won two Slammy Awards, um, but they're for Tag Teams of the Year. And he's won uh, 10 tag titles, nine with Jimmy, and one infamously with Cody Rhodes, Nicholas. <laughs> we were watching that. Was it Fast Lane press conference? Press conference is so good. <laughs> Do you, they sir? Had, <laughs> they had their mischievous pants on that day. Ah, <laughs> oh. yeet! <Yeah. laughs> if you haven't seen it, go and watch it. Go and it's watch great. it. Yeah, there's a there's a, like a uh, great super cut of it on Twitter yesterday. I saw. <laughs> Pat McAfee's leaving. He's off to do football. Brady that's, the bucket. That's how you football. Uh, they had a nice video package, which either it seemed to imply either he was leaving forever or dying. <laughs> uh, but he's doing neither. He's just going away for a few months because that's what he does around this time of year. Um, and it felt it felt really genuine and nice. This, like, obviously we know about the friendship and the it's Michael Cole's birthday gimmick from yeah. uh, Pat McAfee, and they they work really well on commentary. Uh, and it's it's fun that he's like yeah cool I'll be back when this gets interesting in January see you later <laughs> uh, but yeah he's doing football stuff 
And the thing I was going to ask you about is, I asked Andy this earlier, and he told me the person's name, and it is completely gone from me. Yeah, I can't remember about either. who's replacing him. Why not have Big E for a bit? Well, there's one reason why not, and it's because he is going to be in this New Day storyline, and he's mm. actually going to come back to wrestling. You're right. I think if he wasn't Which in it, would be if yeah. If he if, if that doesn't end up happening, then I'll be like, why the hell wouldn't you just put Big yeah. E on commentary? Because at least like like a four month run or whatever it is till January when yeah. Pat McAfee comes back, it'd be so much fun. It'd be a hell of a oh, lot of fun. But yeah, if you want someone is, who's on hinge like Pat yeah. McAfee. But if the plan is to turn him into yeah. this, then I can 100% yeah. understand why they would keep him as far off TV as possible. Old WWE would have still just had him there. <laughs> Do you remember when uh, Dean Ambrose was just being the worst? <laughs> and they were like, Jesus, Renee, what's going on with him? <laughs> She's like, I uh, don't know. Uh, He's he not like this at home. <laughs> Joe Testatore. Joe Testatore. Joe Testatore. Joe Testatore. Joe Testatore. Uh, is going to be taking over. Definitely not going to be any kind of Italian now, is he? Joe. <laughs> Joe Testatore. Testatore. American Testatore. sports. Please be F-A-I-D-O-R. He's got oh, a yes, D next enough. to his head. There you go. That's the D for Disney, not the other kind of D. Joseph William Testatore. There we go. Cool. It's for the podcast listeners there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there you go. Sorry. I just got distracted by people also search for Booger McFarlane. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Not Anthony's his real first name, yeah. I should say. Uh, but I'm uh, hoping this isn't uh, old school WWE. Let's just throw someone in at the deep end and see what happens. Oh, God. What's his name? Oh, Mike Adam Lee was Mike the Adam. first of it. But what was the Adnan other Adnan Verk, was it, or something like yeah, that? Yeah, something like that. Where they're just like, oh, it didn't work out. Why, WWE? Why do you think that is when you throw Yeah, there he completely. is. Poor Adnan. <laughs> there you go. And uh, by the way, it's a zombie um, uh, lumberjack match. Enjoy it. <laughs> I don't really, what, was the, what was the UFC guy they had for a bit? He was really good. Was Jimmy good. Smith, yeah. Just a bad time in that, wasn't it? Yeah. It would have, I think, modern day WWE would have been very different. Anyway. Uh, so next week, IC title tournament begins. Bronson Reed versus Braun Strowman and Uncle Howdy versus Chad Gable to look forward to. Yeah. Randy Orton versus Ludwig Kaiser was our main event, though. Um, Ludwig Kaiser is great. Um, the Undertaker's apparently a big fan of his. That was what we reported in the news today. And uh, that means, potentially, the dead man sat down with Tiffany Stratton. Oh, that's, what's, that's a conversation I want to see. <laughs> Um, I would say, I don't want to <laughs> critique wrestlers too much. Mm -hmm. Not a good idea to chop Randy Orton. No, I, I no. I guess, oh, look, if, you, if you, you're going to have to get used to this if you're going to wrestle good. Yeah, what, it's what, what are you doing? <laughs> he launches the him across. The bloody suplex, like, just thrills him across <laughs> the yeah. thing. Like, bye-bye. <laughs> uh, and then <laughs> Kaiser chopped him again outside the ring, and Orton was like, this is how you do a chop, mate. Uh... He's going to back suplex him on the announce table. He gets distracted because Gunther's there. He bloody loves that, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, Kaiser kicks the leg out of his leg. Back suplexes him onto the table. Orton's like, what the hell? Leans against the steel steps. And Kaiser does that run around the ring thing and drop kicks his knee into the steps. Kaiser's work working over Randy's leg after a break. Tries to do it again, but Orton drops him in the clothesline and just four times, I think it was, drops him on the, the uh, table the fourth time. It reminded me of remember when he had what was uh, what was the lackeys for Jinder Mahal called the yeah oh. the Hollywood boys <laughs> that one when he went oh, they hey. might have killed him <laughs> up you go who cares let Gravity take You'll care of it um, Orton, and follows that up with a power slam Kaiser blocks a draping DDT and hits a big kick for a two count so Orton responds with a superplex and a draping DDT tries for an RKO Kaiser counters that into a schoolboy for a near fall and then Orton just nails him with the RKO one two three post match he invites Gunther into the ring and an eye poke closes out the show a brawl I should say <laughs> but you're you're telling me there was an RKO involved potentially potentially so yeah he put, I poked him and then he got the RKO uh, and then he kind of sat around on the floor doing his Randy Orton he 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 grin uh, uh, after RKOing him again for the second time he's had him two weeks in a row now he's gonna pin him at the pay-per-view that's what yeah. that means if that happens Definitely. yeah next saturday yes next saturday yeah because sunday is nxt no <laughs> merci <laughs> um but i en enjoyed this main event i, I yeah, a, a, a bit like 
what Taker was alluding to, you can tell Kaiser soon is going to step out of the shadow. Well, he already has, but even more so yeah. to showcase the fact he's not just a guy who loses to people who's going to fight Gunther and just introduces Gunther. Yeah. Although, my God, what a job that's going to be in Berlin. Ooh, can you imagine? Yeah. That's, oh. yeah, I've not even thought about that. That is going to be really fun. And then the event, eventual, I assume, Ludwig versus Gunther match that you're going to do oh. at some point is going to be amazing too. But I really like, it's like, um, that is like how The Rock kind of wrestled. Like he did moves The Rock's way. Like whether that was putting on a sharpshooter that didn't exactly look great. But like the <laughs> way he did his kicks and like the little leg shake before the kicks and things like yeah. everything The Rock did in the ring looked like The Rock and nobody else. And Ludwig Kaiser kind of has that. Yeah. He just has that weird... Like arch back thing and like the way he moves around and stuff. He like he's very unique in the terms and what how he moves around the ring. And then like he's just he's so smooth in mm. in the in the moves and things. Um and has had some like really fun matches, like just fun T V stuff. Like he's not obviously had a chance to have like the big pay per view showcase or anything. Um but just really fun. Every single time he goes out it's a really fun t- uh, T V match. So yeah, there's definitely definitely good things coming from Ludwig Kaiser. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, really excited to see what Bash in Berlin looks like now. He strap is. match, mixed tag. And the escalation of Orton. He's got his number, but he definitely won't. <laughs> yes. And then, after that, he's going to become a real bastard, and he's going to eventually cut, fight Cody Rhodes, one would assume. Yeah. It's not bad. not bad return for, for Randy, is it, this year? Not bad at all. Anyway, let us know your thoughts on Monday Night Raw in the comments section below or on X at What Culture WWE. Well, actually, you can follow both of us. You can follow Phil Chambers at Phil My Chambers, and you can follow Adam at Adam Wilborn. Follow our brilliant producer at It's Adam Nicholas, and make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. The NXT preview is available right now, uh, and we'll be back to review NXT tomorrow as well, of course. But for now, this has been the Raw review. My thanks to Phil Chambers. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you soon.